Welcome to The Bottom Line, where we examine trending and important news. Guyana will be considered by the Council of Legal Education for the establishment of a law school. The Council of Legal Education will also inform Guyana of the specifications and the requirements which will have to be met by the government of Guyana for such a law school to be established here. The Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Anand Alal, made it clear that the government of Guyana is not pursuing a Guyanese law school, but a law school to be run by the Council of Legal Education of the Caribbean. The Council of Legal Education of the West Indies is the institution which by law and by treaty owns and operates the law schools in the region and administers and manages legal education in the region. They made it clear that Guyana will continue to be part of that regional umbrella, that we will not act insularly, but we will act as a part of a collective that we don't want a law school here that will not be part of the Council of Legal Education, but we want a Council Law School here. <coughs> because that Council Law School has international standing. It has academic res it has respect in the academic world. And we want a law school here that will have that type of academic respect in the international arena that its graduates will be recognized by countries across the world as the other councils law school are recognized i said also that this school as you know there is a serious problem of overcrowding at the Norman Manley Law School and at the U Wooding Law School. Norman Manley is in Kingston, Jamaica and U Wooding is in St. Augustine, Trinidad and there is a serious overcrowding in those two law schools. Now let's contrast this to what was done to advance legal education under the former APNUFC government. According to the AG, when the APNUFC were in government, their Attorney General, without consulting the Council of Legal Education, aligned himself with some unknown entity called the Law School of Americas. When I made it public that you cannot do this, this thing has to be done with the auspices of the Council or at least inform the council that you are breaking away from the region because Guyana is part of that regional institution. I don't, it's either ignorance or folly. I don't know which one and I don't know which is worse. But of course when he realized, when I made it public, that this thing can't be done without the council knowing, when he went to the council meeting, the people rejected everything that he had to say. They were disrespected and he wanted, he didn't want, he wanted to bring this alien organization in. Nobody knew who, where this organization is from. I don't know what its recognition is, what recognition it, it, it had in the world of academia. And he already made arrangements with this unknown entity called Law School of Americas. And the Council of Legal Education rightfully <clears throat> Excuse me. Rejected all his attempts out of hand. They were not going to tolerate him and tolerate that bombardment and that kind of bullying. And of course, if you look back in the law, in the reports in the press, he abused and violated the people, the Congress of Legal Education. But that is how AP and New AFC. That's how they operate. They are wrong, they are stupid, they are incompetent, and when they don't get their way, they break down and they bully and they threaten and they want to commit violence. That is their modus operandi. The PPPC administration, through the Ministry of Public Works, has launched its 1.8 billion road improvement project set to widen the corridors from Conversation Tree to Dennis Street, Georgetown. 
works on the project is divided into two lots and was awarded in August. Lot 8A of the project is being executed by S. Jack Mohan Construction and General Supplies Inc. to the tune of 1,066,358,738 dollars. Lot 8B was awarded to Trinidad company Calco Guyana Inc. to the tune of $830,293,458. We have to work with what we have now. And if we had a different option, that is to lay out a planned city, we probably would have done many things differently. But the reality is that the country is growing fast. We have more people getting wealthier, more people with vehicles, a number of vehicles in their families, and we have major congestion on our highways. And so we have to find solutions that can meet the needs of the community, that respect the nuances of some communities so that we don't change them totally, yet at the same time fulfill this responsibility of providing more access um, to people and to avoid the congestion. The project which began at Conversation Tree Corridor is approximately 1.9 kilometers from the East Coast Demerara Highway and will connect to Dennis Street. It will also be linked to Sheriff Street from the Dennis Street Corridor. Works on the project will entail the construction of a four-lane carriageway from the East Coast Highway to Delhi Street. A double-lane carriageway on the reserve west of Delhi Street for the northbound traffic. PPC administration continues to roll out relief to cushion the effects of the pandemic, seasonal flooding, the rise in freight costs, and poor management and broken promises by the former APNU AFC administration. Private sugarcane workers at a previous outreach at Vice President Jadjo to be considered for a relief grant as they were seriously affected by closure of estates in the region. With Cabinet's approval, the Vice President and team are here at Windsor Forest in Region 3 to bring relief to these private cane farmers. This is what they had to say. It benefit me a lot because I got three. Yeah, and it would help me with a lot right now because... Mohammed Shaheed, right Mohammed Shaheed. Mohammed yeah, Shaheed. From since Mohammed Sakar, we don't know Mohammed the Sakar. situation we've been in, so I'm very thankful for this. Mohan, but the Abhi president will give you something and Abhi he could Abhi say, Ash okay, Ragnar. that um, he help out with, with the private sector. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad for him that we do. And in future time, that he's promised us that we're getting more and we're developing the country. We're so glad about the president. Feeling better, father. At least I could go and set my family down comfortable. Well, this is very good because it's been a while we went to sit down. When they play them in hard work, you know, and during the pandemic. Kind of thing. So it's, it's been Muhammad. very good. Yeah. Well, it benefit me Chandra in finance Chandra. way and many other ways, but same way, I'm glad if I could Chris Bradford. link with the Chris program Bradford. there, forget his job because. Chris Bradford. Not his job very well, his training. Because he's operator for any machine like bolos and that kind of stuff, but the certificate Chris is for beating me. In Chris the country, I, can, I can't just roll up anywhere and show anybody I'm an operator. Right. People who know me take me as an operator, but the certificate is one well, of my half in, I'm glad to get it. They say I'm putting a little use, you know. I really got no wife and children, my farm, 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 plant a farm or so, they say. Mm -hmm. You think it's good government helping out people like you? Yeah, man. Take a good year because it's for semi life for uh, over over 19 years of working on the farmer and the first time in life I get this. My father used to work and he died for today, he never gets to see this year yet. So I receive it and I'm proud of this. Well, it's a good help for the who don't have really 
nothing for deep pimp and for one shot this time. Yeah? All right. So this is a great help Thank for me. You. With something, at least it will give me something for help out me for the time when I work, for the couple crap when I work with it. We are right, comfortable and bless the president and everyone who has this. Please you can help do something, you know, something. You must block something, man. But how oh, we say we are king, cut the same way, and we are still get, because we are carrying king the same way in the estate, and we estate people get, we supposed to get the same treatment, because none of the difference, all we are king, cut it together. Mm. I'm glad. And I think twice about it, you understand? Because I say, if the government make sure it is here, it must affect these farmers there. Because the other rest get, the, the next one will feel away. But we're glad, we glad that this comes to find like this. So everybody will get the individual. Well, this will benefit me a lot more now. Because for the past couple of weeks, we've been in a work. And now we start to work because we boss is not in the country. So like about four or five, Five weeks now we work now. So this at least this is a comment for the home a little what do you think about the At least the government Osman doing something good. Osman Support we because other than this you can do something. Well, benefit me always. Good, very good. I'm getting good. The government support is good because I'm helping the, um, the people, helping the people all over the country. It's good. Guyanese have expressed appreciation for the PBPC government's decision to massively reduce gasoline and diesel prices. According to Senior Minister with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, the prices for gasoline and diesel were reduced at the state-owned Guyana Oil Company Limited in an effort to further relieve local consumers. The price reductions that were made at the Guy Oil Pumps are a 20% drop in gasoline price from 269 per litre to 215 per litre and a reduction of diesel costs from 265 per litre to 225 per litre, representing a 15% decrease. This is what the public had to say. This will help me a lot, help me save a lot. I would say this good. And it's about time, but you know, things around the world, everything is going up. So you can't really, you got to see it from all different angles. And it's a good thing that it, it dropped. I'm glad that they dropped the gas here. Yeah. Thankful for the small mercy that they do for me, yeah? So I was feeling the pinch of the pump. <laughs> because you're actually paying more, you were, I was actually paying more. And sometimes it looks like if you're not um, making any sense. And then at one time I began telling my passengers, because they had a lot of customers, tell them I, I have to raise your fear, but now that the government put them back, I will not have to do that anymore. Since taking office in August of 2020, the president, Irfan Ali, led People's Progressive Party Civic Administration, has implemented a number of policies to lower the cost of living for citizens in an ongoing effort to address complaints about the high gas prices and to reduce the pressure felt by citizens. So far, the excise tax on fuel has been brought down tremendously. Opposition leader Aubrey Norton, while overseas, made claims that Guyanese who don't support the PPPC government are faced with discrimination. Senior Minister with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, responded to this unsubstantiated comment made by Norton. APNU and its principal constituent member of the PNC have a long history, in fact that would unavoidably lead us to certain conclusions in relation to the comments that he has made. First of all, the APNU, AFC, current opposition, is a party that has demonstrated their intellectual bankruptcy, their incompetence and inability to formulate policies in the interest of the country, in the interest of Guyana and the Guyanese people, and their complete lack of capacity either to present any coherent policy or indeed any sensible response 
or this government's comprehensive policy agenda. If we were to go back to the period during 2015 and 2020, when the AP and UAFC had an opportunity to serve in government, what you witnessed during that five-year period was the abject failure on the part of the AP and UAFC to improve the lives of the people of Guyana and the economic circumstances of our country. I can give multiple examples in this regard. First of all, during the five-year period, they articulated no vision or policy in relation to promoting growth in the economy and in particular to promoting diversification of the economy. Instead, it appeared that the strategy was simply to sit and wait for oil to come. We saw agriculture completely decimated. We saw the services sector completely decimated. And this is even before the no confidence motion. We saw, and then subsequently with the passage of the no confidence motion, we saw a political behavior and a policy posture that led to the, essentially, to the economy grinding to a halt as a result of which during their last year in office, the non-oil economy suffered a very sharp contraction because of course you were dealing with, it, you were, the country was coping with this very adverse and hostile policy environment under the APNU. AFC. If you look at the successive budgets of the PPPC administration, you will see a consistent pattern and a consistent policy position that promotes improving the lives of all. That means creating an environment for job creation, for income generation, and for improved well-being, to which the APNU simply could not respond. The recourse to this, the ethnic bogeyman, the baseless statements being made about discrimination, etc., are reflective of the fact that the APNU AFC has no sensible response to the comprehensive agenda that is being implemented by President Ali's People's Progressive Party civic government. And if you look across the entire spectrum, if you look at almost everything that we're doing in government, you will see a systematic approach designed to ensure that all guys benefit. In a special address to the nation, His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali announced an additional 28,000 one-off cash grant for each old-age pensioner before the end of the year. This new announcement of this one-off grant in 2022 will provide an additional 1.8 billion in disposable income to our pensioners. The new measure adds to the host of measures, policies and programs being implemented by the PPPC administration to improve the lives of city citizens. To our senior citizens, I wish to say that the government will continue to respect and honor the service you have given to our country over the years. As we continue to take all the steps necessary to ensure that the quality of life you enjoy continue to improve in every regard. Thank you. We wish you well. God bless you. And I hope that this additional benefit that the government has announced today will go a far way in helping you. Since the Irfan Ali-led PBPC government assumed office in August 2020, old age pension was increased from 22,500 to 25,000 and from 25,000 to 28,000 in 2022, amounting to more than a 36% increase in the grant in two years, placing approximately 22 billion in the hands of our old age pensioners annually. And that's the bottom line.